Hey, what's up everyone? John of the Geek here and today I'm going to be reviewing the Boxy TV. Now the setup process for this, hooking it up to my TV, was a very simple process. Like the box says, it only takes a few minutes. All I needed was the uh, coaxial cable from my cable line, uh, which I do have cable. I don't have an antenna. I'm not using the antenna that it comes supplied with. And then there's the HDMI out that goes to my TV. There's the LAN uh, Ethernet cord, uh, but you could use the wireless that's built into it if you want and then there is the power cord and that's all I need to uh, set this up and connect it to my TV of course I have to switch my TV to the correct HDMI port but there's also the options of uh, adding some USB thumb drives uh, that you could uh, load videos on and I also have that plugged into the box and so once you plug in the power cord you don't have to turn it on or anything like that it just powers on and I think it just runs all the time, although it does power down after idle use. So it, it shuts itself off until you hit a button on the remote. It, it'll turn back on again. But uh, essentially, that's all you need to get connected to the uh, TV. And so once you're connected, it's going to ask you to connect to the Internet. Then uh, once it's connected to the Internet, it's going to look on the Boxy servers for an update and uh, uh, right out of the box it did have an update and it updated itself it took about five to ten minutes uh, not more than ten minutes it was more like five minutes to uh, download and restart um, the update and then once you've finished your updating it's going to ask you to activate your device through the web so you need a computer and you got to navigate to uh, boxy.tv slash setup and then the TV itself is going to have a code and it's going to tell you to enter the code and once you enter that uh, the box itself will know uh, that you've entered the code on the computer and then it will let you continue on um, to uh, setting up your boxy TV and then uh, the next thing it'll do is uh, scan your TV channels so depending on how you connect to it if you are telling it to connect via the um, antenna it's going to scan over the air for reception with the supplied antenna but I'm using the uh, coaxial cable from my cable provider and it's going to go ahead and scan through those channels and uh, set up and whatever channels that I could find it's going to set up it's not going to be able to show you or find your premium channels if you did buy premium channels this is supposed to be a basic 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 uh, local channels TV lineup it's not going to give you things like the discovery channel even though that's kind of comes included with your cable package if you're a subscriber to cable it's not going to come with the HBO premium showtimes all that premium stuff it's just going to find the basic TVs your local channels uh, that's provided through the uh, cable provider so once it sets it all up you are then presented with this menu here that you see and so right off the bat I'm on the um, apps section so up at the top here you have apps and then you have TV and this is what's on right now and this is what's on later so this is the live TV shows I'm not really gonna show uh, the TVs cuz um, I'll have some trouble with uh, YouTube copyright stuff so this is the uh, live TV and it does show just as if you know it was a straight up out of your cable box uh, if it's in HD then it's gonna show it in HD uh, if it's standard def it's gonna crop it um, with a 4-3 crop uh, with a black bars on the side but um, essentially it runs just fine and this is how you pretty much watch your TV here you don't really choose a channel per se basically you would just pick a show that you want to watch because it reads what's on right now and essentially these are 19 channels that's all I got that's able to come through my cable so as you can see at the top right there so that's the TV portion of it and it loads up fine and it looks fine there's no hiccups there's no flickering no problems and all that stuff all right so that's a live TV channel so we'll go over to the apps here and apps typically you would think oh there's an app store no there is no app store there's just the apps that it comes with here perhaps maybe later on there'll be updates and more apps will be added but there aren't any apps that you could uh, download because there's no developer kind of marketplace for developers to develop apps for this so 
the featured three apps here is uh, Netflix, Vudu, and YouTube. And so you need an account, a Netflix account, a Vudu account. You don't necessarily have to have a YouTube account, but it is good to, if you want to access your stuff. But the Netflix app, I'll fire it up here. I'll show you how long it takes for it to load up. I've already gone ahead and set up my Netflix account on here. And this is pretty much, I just want to show you in real time how long it takes. This could be a deal breaker for you. Some of you out there might be like, God, this is taking forever. So that's pretty much it. We're right into the Netflix. Those of you who are familiar with Netflix and uh, is going to be buying this probably for this feature this is pretty much the interface here you're all pretty much familiar with it those of you who know it and so i'm just going to go back out of here we'll go into the voodoo movies and this is pretty much a pay-per-view rental uh, and purchasing of uh, hd quality movies i mean really high quality high definition and high definition audio and this is pretty much uh, you they start you off with 599 credit when you sign up for this on this boxy tv here which is really cool and so we have you know new movies that are out these are like just that just came out to none of that uh, you got to wait for a certain amount of time to go by and yeah so this is the voodoo app and we'll kind of just check this out I, i'm not going to play anything because i just don't want to get uh, banned from showing copyrighted materials so it gives you a lot of cool information here it kind of scrolls through they have the extras cast and crew reviews more info and stuff like that which is pretty nice and then uh, you can watch um, a trailer you can do a two minute preview and watch two minutes somewhere in the of the movie so we'll go back out to the home page here and then we have the youtube app and I'll show you what this looks like. Uh, maybe I might be able to find one of my own videos if I could show that. Typing in to this thing though is kind of a pain because you just have a directional pad on the remote here. And it's not that great uh, when you want to type or look for things. Let's see if I can. And they have categories here that you can check out. But let's see what's trending right now, right? And uh, for the most part, it does load up okay, the videos anyways. Let me load up one of my own videos. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip to finding one of my own videos here. So I'll just go to the search button. And I'll type in Johnny the Geek. All right, so let's check out one of my own videos here. And it was uh, fairly fast to find. Hey, what's up everyone? Johnny the Geek here. And today I'm going and it looks to pretty good. Building. But what's what I noticed here on the YouTube app, and I don't know if you could see it. Let me show you right in the middle here. See, did you see that? It says loading. So it like flickers a loading light button thing. And uh, I really don't like that. It's kind of annoying. It's very distracting. And it's like that on every video that I've seen. So not that great of a YouTube app. Although it does play the video really well. I mean, my video is a 720p video and it looks really good, you know, clarity wise. And, and I apologize, the camera doesn't really capture it very well. But uh, let me go ahead and go back out of here. And that's the YouTube app. I'm going to go ahead and edit, exit out of there. All right. So uh, the next, the bottom part of this has uh, a few apps. And it's uh, Wall Street Journal Live, Vimeo, TED, Spotify, Pandora. Obviously, you need accounts for all this. Cloudy is just uh, being able to share your videos that you might have uh, through the file browser here. Uh, with other people gives you a clickable link that you can share with people so they could watch what you're watching if you have like uh, you know family footage on your camera that you put on a thumb drive and uh, you want to share it through cloudy here this is what um, you would use there's a weather app here it's going to determine my area to, based on my uh, zip code that i entered in earlier um, so yeah that's pretty much there's a wind advisory in my area it's nice 70 degrees sunny 
All right, so let's take a look at the file browser. And I have a USB thumb drive plugged in here. And I'm going to go ahead and play a video file. And this is a very large video file. Large meaning that it's a high bit rate. It's like a 50 megabit bit rate. DSLR footage, 1080p. And it plays it very smooth, right? And I'll play another one here. And so I'll go ahead. Oops, fast forward it too fast. And uh, your basic controls uh, are the uh, fast forward, play, pause and you can uh, either hold the button down to fast forward or you can press the button to skip ahead 10 seconds right and so that's pretty much uh, the video here and it's a very clear nice smooth running video right so let's go into some of the settings that you have we'll take a look at the device name uh, version serial number all that jazz you can check for software updates your IP address, and then uh, how you want to display your audio and your resolution. So we have 1080p here, and you could choose how you want it. It automatically should detect what your TV is, and it asks you in the very beginning what you want it to be. Sound effects volume, this is a little like clicky noise. Um, you probably can't hear it right now because I don't have it too loud. All right, so the TV, you get to choose here, you know, what what you want to show if you want major channels or all your channels. I'll go ahead and do all my channels. And then uh, your time and location. Some services. You want to set your Netflix and Vudu. It has some personal information on here, so I'm not really going to show that. And that's pretty much it. Support. And so the cloud DVR functionality of it. Now, apparently I found out and I'm not really too happy about this, but the function, the cloud DVR function that they have apparently doesn't work for video or uh, reception, cable reception that comes in from the cable TV uh, or the coax cable line. You can only use it when you have the uh, antenna over the air and you can record stuff over the air. So it doesn't work with the other channels that you have. And I don't know why that is. It probably has to do with copyright protection HDCP or whatever it is that comes through that is not able to to copy or record that but over the air is not coded or encrypted in anything in the HDCP format so that's probably why you're able to, sh to save it so I'm not too happy about this so I can't even record my regular TV shows that I would get uh, through the DVR cloud functionality that you have so all in all that's pretty much it. Not a whole lot to it. There's some quirks to it. Hopefully they add more apps. Hopefully they add uh, Hulu Plus. That's one of the things that I really wanted to see on here was Hulu Plus because they have a lot of TV shows on Hulu Plus through a subscription. And if I want to replace my TV with this box or my cable TV channels subscription with this box, I kind of want to have Hulu because they have a lot of TV shows. Netflix has a lot of box TV shows, but Voodoo is all movies pretty much, but really Hulu Plus is a really good uh, app. So all in all, do I recommend this? To contend against the Roku box, yeah, I would actually recommend this. It has a, it's very basic and easy to use, and you, it uh, passes through your TV, which the Roku box doesn't do, and it has the same thing, same apps as the Roku box, and it's very easy to use as well. Uh, it looks a little bit nicer, but it also has a file browser that you can just put movie files. You know you got a relative out there that has uh, movie files that you could install on there and and share that with you know your friends and family, your relatives. Plug that in and you'll be able to play movies from there. Another thing, another downside to this, it does not connect to my network and read uh, shared folders or shared devices on my network. So my computer is sharing a folder with a lot of video files on there and I can't access that through here. So I would really like a, a DLN, DLNA support, uh, some type of DLNA support that allows me to access uh, video files that I'm sharing, right? And so that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later.